Today we know 118 chemical elements. The atoms of these various elements differ in the number of protons in their nuclei, known as the atomic number. Here is a list of all elements known today in the order of their atomic numbers. The atomic number for hydrogen is 1, meaning that there is only one proton in the nucleus of any hydrogen atom. The atomic number for helium is 2, for lithium it is 3, for beryllium 4, for boron 5, for carbon 6, for nitrogen 7, for oxygen 8, for fluorine 9, for neon 10, and so on until organesson, atomic number 118. For a neutral atom, the number of electrons around the atomic nucleus is the same as the number of protons in the atomic nucleus. Therefore, the number of electrons in the neutral atom of any element is the same as the atomic number. How atoms can connect with other atoms to form all ordinary matter around us is determined by how electrons in them are distributed among orbitals. The distribution of electrons among orbitals is called the electron configuration of an atom. The electron configuration of an atom can be determined using three rules. The first rule is Wolfgang Pauli's exclusion principle that we already mentioned in the previous video, according to which no more than two electrons can reside in the same orbital. The second rule is the so-called Aufbau principle. Aufbau means building up in German. This principle states that electrons occupy orbitals where they have lower energy before they occupy orbitals where they have higher energy. Last time we said that the electrons in all orbitals within the same subshell of the same shell have the same energy. We also looked at how to order subshells by increasing energy of electrons that reside in them. The order that we found was 1s, the orbital uh, subshell with the lowest energy, then with progressively higher energies, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, and so on. If you don't remember how to find this order, please review the video on orbitals. The third and final rule was found by the German physicist Friedrich Hund and is known as Hund's rule. It states that within a subshell, Electrons occupy empty orbitals first, and only when there are no empty orbitals left, electrons will share an orbital with another electron. This behavior is often said to be similar to that of passengers on a bus who will first occupy empty seats, and only then sit next to another passenger if there are no empty seats left. We can use these three rules to determine the electron configurations for atoms of any element. To visualize how electrons occupy orbitals, we will draw each orbital as a square with orbitals that have lower energy, lower on the slide, and orbitals that have higher energies, higher on the slide. We will draw all orbitals within the same subshell together because electrons in them have the same energy. We will draw subshells in separate columns, as subshells of the various shells on the very left. These subshells to the right of them, D subshells still further to the right, and F subshells at the very right. Then we will start filling the orbitals with electrons, which we will represent by arrows. According to Pauli's exclusion principle, each orbital can hold no more than two electrons. We will draw the first electron that goes into an orbital with the arrow pointing up, and the second electron that goes into the same orbital with the arrow pointing down. Let's start by considering hydrogen, atomic number one. Its neutral atoms only have one electron, so we don't have to worry about Pauli's principle here. 
According to the Aufbau principle, this only electron will occupy the orbital where it has the lowest energy, the only orbital in the 1s subshell. Because there is only one electron, we also don't need to worry about Hund's rule. The electron configuration for hydrogen is written as 1s1, where the superscript indicates the number of electrons. In this case, one in every subshell that isn't empty. For the next ele element, helium, atomic number two, there are two electrons. According to the Aufbau principle, both of them occupy the only orbital in the 1s subshell. Pauli's exclusion principle allows it, and because there is only one orbital in an S subshell placing both electrons there also satisfies Hund's rule. The electron configuration for helium is written as 1s2, where the superscript indicates that there are two electrons in the 1s subshell. For lithium, atomic number 3, the first two electrons are placed in the only orbital of the 1s subshell, just like for helium. However, Pauli's exclusion principle prohibits placing the third electron in the same orbital. Therefore, according to the Aufbau principle, this electron has to go into the orbital where it will have the next lowest energy, the only orbital of the 2s subshell. The electron configuration for lithium is written as 1s2, 2s1, indicating that there are two electrons in the s subshell of the first shell and one electron in the s subshell of the second shell. For beryllium, atomic number four, the first three electrons occupy the same orbitals as in lithium, and the fourth electron goes into the only orbital in the 2s subshell, according to the Aufbau principle, so that the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2. This configuration is consistent with both Pauli's exclusion principle and Hund's rule. For boron, atomic number 5, the first four electrons occupy the same orbitals as for beryllium. According to Pauli's exclusion principle, no more electrons can be placed into the only orbitals in the 2s subshell. Therefore, according to the Aufbau principle, the fifth electron must occupy one of the three orbitals in the 2p subshell. Electrons in all orbitals within the same subshell have the same energy, so it doesn't matter which one of the three orbitals we place the fifth electron into, we will draw it in the one on the left. The electron configuration for boron is then 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Two electrons in the 1s subshell, two electrons in the 2s subshell, and one electron in the 2p subshell. For carbon, atomic number 6, the first five electrons occupy the same orbitals as for boron. According to Pauli's exclusion principle, the sixth electron can't go into the 1s and 2s orbitals because two electrons occupy each of them already. Therefore, based on the Aufbau principle, the sixth electron should go into an orbital with the next lowest energy, one of the orbitals in the 2p subshell. Because electrons in all three orbitals in the 2p subshell have the same energy, the Aufbau principle can't tell us which of the three the sixth electron should be placed into. However, Hund's rule specifies that it should not go into the same orbital as the fifth electron, because there are two empty orbitals available in the 2p subshell. It doesn't matter which one of the empty orbitals we place our electron into, we will just draw it in the second one. The electron configuration for carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Two electrons in the 1s subshell, two electrons in the 2s subshell, and two electrons in the 2p subshell. For nitrogen, atomic number 7, the first six electrons occupy the same orbitals as for carbon. The seventh electron is placed in the last empty orbital in the 2p subshell, using the same reasoning as we discussed for carbon. The electron configuration for nitrogen is 1s2, 
2s2, 2p3. For oxygen, atomic number 8. The first seven electrons occupy the same orbitals as for nitrogen. According to the Aufbau principle, the eighth electron must be placed in one of the three orbitals that make up the 2p subshell. There are no more orbitals left in this subshell. So according to Hund's rule, these electrons will have to share one of the three orbitals in the 2p subshell with another electron. It doesn't matter which of the three orbitals in the 2p subshell we add it to, we will draw it in the left one. The electron configuration for oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. For fluorine atomic number 9, the first eight electrons occupy the same orbitals as for oxygen. According to the Aufbau principle, the ninth electron must be placed into an orbital in the 2p subshell. There are no empty orbitals left in the subshell, so according to Hund's rule, this electron will have to share an orbital with another electron. According to Pauli's exclusion principle, it cannot be placed into the orbital in the 2p subshell that already has two electrons, so we will draw it in one of the other two. Doesn't matter in which one. The electron configuration for fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. For neon, atomic number 10, the first nine electrons occupy the same orbitals as for fluorine, and according to the Aufbau principle, the tenth electron also goes into the 2p subshell. It occupies the only orbital in the subshell that does not have two electrons in it yet. The electron configuration for neon is then 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. For sodium atomic number 11, the first 10 electrons occupy the same orbitals as for neon. At this point, two electrons occupy each of the orbitals in the 1s, 2s, and 2p subshells. Therefore, according to Pauli's exclusion principle, no more electrons can be added to these subshells. According to the Aufbau principle, then, the 11th electron must go into the orbital with the next lowest energy, the only orbital in the 3s subshell. Therefore, the electron configuration for sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. There are two electrons in the 1s subshell, two electrons in the 2s subshell, six electrons in the 2p subshell, and one electron in the 3s subshell. We can continue using this reasoning to establish the electron configuration for any element. Let us consider the example of strontium, atomic number 38. The first 11 electrons occupy the same orbitals as in sodium, according to the Aufbau principle. The 12th electron also occupies the 3s orbital, but the 13th has to occupy one of the orbitals in the 3p subshell because all orbitals at lower energy already hold two electrons each, and according to Pauli's exclusion principle, can take no more. The 14th and 15th electrons fill the other two orbitals in the 3p subshell, according to Hund's rule. Before the 16th, 17th and 18th electron are placed as the second electron in each of the three orbitals in the 3p subshell. At this point, the 3p subshell is completely occupied and can take no more electrons. The 19th and 20th electrons occupy the 4s subshell as it is the next lowest in energy. The 21st through 30th electrons occupy the 3d subshell, filling its five orbitals with one electron each first, according to Hund's rule, and then adding a second electron to each one. The 31st through 36th electrons fill in the 4p subshell in the same manner, and the 37th and 38th occupy the 5s subshell. The electron configuration for strontium is therefore 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2. 
we should note the following self-checks that we can perform to figure out whether an electron configuration that we have written for some element is correct. First, the superscript that indicates the number of electrons in a subshell can be no more than two for an S subshell because an S subshell only consists of a single orbital and Pauli's exclusion principle prohibits placing more than two electrons into an orbital. The superscript can be no more than six for a P subshell, three P orbitals with two electrons each for a total of six electrons in this subshell, no more than 10 for a D subshell, 5D orbitals with two electrons each, and no more than 14 for an F or uh, subshell, 7F orbitals with two electrons each. Second, the sum of all superscripts in an electron configuration must be equal to the atomic number of the element, because the total number of the electrons in a neutral atom of an element must be equal to its atomic number, no matter how the electrons are distributed among orbitals.